Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salati wa salam ashraf al-mursaleen Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu sallam bi madadakum wa nazalakum Sayyidina Rasulul Kareem bi khabirul azeem. InshaAllah ma'azim shaitan wa bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa tiyallah tiyar Rasulul amri minkum. InshaAllah. Do you have any questions? As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, how do we discern when to minimize contact with abusive relatives versus seeking contact to polish ourselves internally? How to The ones that you feel are of benefit versus ones that are, are very abusive and negative then you try to refrain from that. So there's no need for abuse at any time. So I, I don't understand those types of situations. I mean we had relatives that didn't like Islam but abusive is a heavy word. So I don't know if when you enter the house they slap you, beat you, kick you, what, is you, what do you mean by abusive? If they're not polite to you and you find that to be abusive, I think that's, that's probably not correct. So abuse shouldn't be tolerated by anyone and our understanding of abuse is generally physical or very verbally aggressive character which you should stay away from crazy people. Now if somebody's just not polite and they don't necessarily like Islam or like you then those are things that you practice in being humble and quiet and we have talks on that like a chess game, you know where you're going to go, you know exactly who's going to say what and you know the shaitan is coming through them. So then you practice this way of, of silence and, and your madad and tafakkur and contemplation and, and keep your connection inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Shaykh Walaikum As Salaam Rahmatullah I'm new to the tariqah, may Allah grant you a long life. Sayyidi when I pray or make zikr I tend to feel… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Feel like electric shocks, is that good or bad? Yeah, pray inshaAllah that you're not near any electric outlet and <laughs> if any wiring is incorrectly done in your house and you're, you're getting electrocuted by means of uh, electricity then you have to seek, you know, uh, somebody to come and, and give attention to that. Other than that any type of energy practice then has energy and becoming familiar with the energy, becoming more subtle with the energy and, and feeling it, it can feel sometimes like uh, putting your tongue on a 9 volt battery, the square batteries and you would feel like the shock come to your mouth. So the electric current is there, so at times it may spark on your feet, your hands, your body and that, that's uh, energy practices. But keep making the meditation and the connection with the shaykh, connect your heart and, and keep all of uh, that understanding inshaAllah and, and slowly, slowly things open, get the meditation book, it's an encyclopedia for all these questions. Two years of questions are all in there, I don't think there's something people could ask that's not in that book inshaAllah, the timeless reality inshaAllah.
makes a great gift for people so they can get many copies and give them out to people as a gift and at the same time you support the tariqah. The tariqah is all about supporting and our group is definitely all about the supporting the charity projects, the, the da'wah to sending out information and propagating these realities and Muhammadan haqqaiqs and so alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi is Imam Mahdi salam physically with Imam Ali salam and is there any relation to the jinn who took and protected Imam Mahdi salam after his birth? Any relation and yeah I don't know that's too much detail but I would assume that uh, everything is related and uh, everything has a connection. In your connection with the shaykh, what's the relevance of that? So these are questions just you know to throw out questions or is that something in relationship to how you want to meditate, how you want to connect, how you want to build your reality so that to even take the reflections and the light of Imam Mahdi and Imam Ali and all of these realities. All of them are a much greater reality but first people have to make the connection with the shaykh so that these fires and these lights can begin to come onto the heart of the servant, inshaAllah. And then the, the talk that we had the night before of life is, a, is in a building, are you taking the floors up or are you taking the buttons down and everything in life is about influencing you to take the floor and press the button to leave the high rise, leave the penthouse of uh, Divinely Realities. And shaitan's whole purpose is to get everybody to come to lower floors where he can attack them and begin to overtake them. Those talks have to have meditation and contemplation and, and they have to, to go deeper into those for that fires and that download to be finished. InshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi can you grant some knowledge on our relationship to the Ahlul Bayt aids in our changing of our frequency for the purpose of gaining that charge? The knowledge of our relationship to Ahlul Bayt? Yeah that uh, the tariqah shaykhs and the guides and ourselves are all Ahlul Bayt. So this light of Prophet that runs through the light and the blood of the shaykh is a frequency in which Allah sends them to teach these realities. And when the students come to the way and begin to take this way of muraqabah and, and the tarbiyah of the tariqah, it's a attuning. So that when you attune yourself to the frequency of that shaykh. So anyone want they can study attuning and go to our website muhammadanway.com, everything is Muhammadan Way, so Muhammadan Way YouTube, muhammadanway.com. You go to the articles and you study a tuning. You're going to take your frequency and you're going to tune it to the shaykh's frequency. And he's from the light of Prophet from the blood of Prophet And as a result when you attune then that frequency will be dressed upon the servant. And that's the whole concept of the madad and, and the whole teaching of this muhabbat and love that when you come with an open heart they're going to start vibrating onto your energy and then change the frequency and vibration of people to match their frequency. And all the way down to their molecular structure will begin to change by this grafting of light. So as soon as you make the madad you're calling upon these lights, these lights enter into the soul and the vibration of one atom from the light of the shaykh 
begins to enter into the servant like a battlefield. So imagine you read about these big battles, you are the biggest battlefield and that you're asking for yourself to be conquered. So who was the best in conquering was Prophet to establish the flag of Allah So when you make the madad this one grain of light from the shaykh begin to enter into the servant with the light of Prophet Hudan mean Allah, Allah describes Prophet as a guide. So means this Muhammadan light begins to enter into the servant and bring more of its light and begin to establish the flag of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah and begin to battle to get to the heart. And that becomes the battle with the servant and the shaykh that if they enter with this muhabbat, enter with this taslim, enter with all of these practices, that light can enter deeper and deeper into the heart of the servant until they feel the love of the shaykh. And that's what we said, you, you're keeping now the muhabbat al mashaykh and then hudur mashaykh. And when you have that love and reverence means the light of the shaykh is entered into the heart. Establishing the flag of Prophet and in the real flag, the real lights, the real reality of faith that now going to open. And then with that muhabbat and hudur means then you're keeping their presence. Keeping presence means you want more reflection of that light to enter. And that becomes the whole grafting and attuning because more and more light is coming. So you're leaving your bad character so you can keep the light. As soon as you go do bad things that light leaves and you have to restart again. So you're trying to keep more and more of that light, more and more of that light until the, the light begins to overwhelm your light and what happens then? They call it fana. So there's love, presence and annihilation. So the heart is like a flower and it has to open for that love. What then shaitan is going to do at that stage is battle your mind because the light is trying to enter your heart and shaitan is trying to talk to your head. And that's why we said the path is not based on head and heart, it's based on heart. So shaitan is very scared, he sees this light is coming towards your heart, He's going to keep talking to your head, oh don't, you don't need them, no, 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 no because he wants you to listen to him. You don't need guidance, oh these people just they want this, they just want that, they will make every type of ridiculous excuse. And if you give in to the hearing you're lost, he's overtaken you, thrown the shaykh out. So that's the great battle, that's just to establish the flag of, of love. And this is a, a Divinely love for the Divinely Presence. So how to keep that flow of energy coming into the heart is battling the head, keep their presence. That becomes your madad. If you're not training on a daily basis to keep the presence of the shaykh, keep reflecting into my heart, I, I want to see more of your presence in the eye of my heart and less of shaitan's whisperings. But shaitan doesn't give up. The whole time he begins to whisper, whisper, whisper until you see people they drop at that phase. They never entered into the fana of the shaykh. So that's not a state that people th they may have thought they got there then they left but they never reached that state. They only battled the state of trying to love someone and they didn't do that right either because when you love and hate. Prophet described that's a munafiq. When you go from a state of love, you become angered by something in your mind or in physical reality, you become angered and then you hate them. Prophet described that the munafiq is the one whom claim to love and then hates, most dangerous. So it means they never reach the station of fana. They tried to keep love in their heart, they 
battled with the hudur and keeping the presence, presence of the shaykh, presence of the shaykh. If I could be physically around them, if not I'll keep the meditation which is more and most powerful. And as a result of keeping that meditation they begin to take more of the light of the shaykh within them and they disappear. And even if they have a physical issue and many testings have been done for our own personal life from our shaykhs, very, very difficult testing. But the bond is so powerful that even the physicality is lifetimes apart. But the soul is right in the presence and it's an eternal bond that has taken place and it can't be separated. It's like a molecular bond, it's not a bond of flesh but from the bond of the soul like an atom. When it reached the fana and lost itself and brought the light of the guide, there's no going from that state. No matter the physicalities are can be North Pole, South Pole or the physicality dies for one, doesn't matter. The bond of the soul has taken place, the fana has taken place and that shaykh's light is now on the servant and on that guide. And their secrets, their realities are dressing that, that guide now because they're a guide now. So that state is not an easy state where people think they, they reach that. They're battling only the state of muhabbat, trying to keep the hudur. And shaitana is right there with a like a pick and picking that off, say, ah oh, they just want this, they just want that, they just want this and whisper, whisper, whisper until your love breaks. Then you see them, they don't come, they sit somewhere else, they pretend they're not with you and that becomes then the presence or they break away if they were watching online because the shaitan has entered into their whispering and their waswas. And if they go around to too many places and they start hearing the waswas of other people. So remember the rules, if you're a wali you have to be cursed by at least a thousand shaykhs. Means ulama are going to come against every type of wilayat and sainthood or any type of their knowledge, that's the given. So when students start going around they start to become confused. Oh I asked this imam about muraqabah, wow he told me this, he hated this, he said you guys are like this, you're like that and that's then like an agent of shaitan that was not something you were supposed to do. You're supposed to take the knowledges, take the realities, you make your tafakkur, make your contemplation and you reach to your realities. These realities are signed off by Sultanul Awliya, they're signed off by Mawlana. So they've already been verified and credentialed. You don't take just some Joe down the street or even a famous guy from YouTube and you go somewhere in the UK find him and ask the, this and that. They're not of that caliber, they're not of that degree, they don't even know a drop of that knowledge. They're not the one to credential these realities but what they do serve as a purpose is to confuse students who are already battling in their head with shaitan. So, oh I told you, this is like this, this is like this and that becomes the way Allah has it that way. To show that it's not that easy to reach to this level and this life is filled with landmines and any one of you step on immediately takes away your faith, takes away your understanding and it's not meant for everybody. So it's like a bunch of uh, you know clinging on and Allah shakes the trees because people think it's like free bananas so all the people come and grab them thinking it's free, let's go. But Allah is not letting everybody to reach. So begin to shake and shake and shake and shake and then many fall off because they can't take. So they never reached the fana, 
Fana is like a molecular bond. Can you take the oxygen off of H2O? No, it's explosive if you do. And Allah at that point says, don't separate what we call to be joint. So it means this bond that you make and if you can ever reach to that reality of fana, it becomes eternal. Whether the body of the shaykh is near you or from north to south or even left the earth, it makes no difference because now the soul has been dressed and is being continuously dressed by the soul of that guy, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam Sayyidi if, if we want to join this path of sunnah is it okay to leave another shaykh's practice? You can't say that because you're not supposed to be leaving the shaykhs because then you go to another shaykh and say leave him. The situation that you have is that you, you have a, a loyalty to show Prophet means that if you've taken the hand of a guide, you've, you study under them, you take from their knowledges, take from their realities and then pick up and go is tariq al-adab and it will make a difficulty in the connection with Prophet because they don't reward disloyalty. So it's like if you watch these movies of kings and queens that somebody shows up on your doorstep and say, who are you from? Well I'm from the other kingdom, so why are you here? I don't like them anymore. But why are you here to us? You were there over there with them, say, no I don't like them anymore, tomorrow you won't like us either and you'll be the next uh, guy down the street. So the, that character is not a character that you re would re reward but the character in which they say, what are you doing here? And say, my shaykh died that he passed away and the successor was a child or, or somebody who was not relevant and I wish to take your hand, you're fully authorized at that time to continue, must have a living guide continuing. Or say, I went to an event and they say I took bayat, there was 5,000 people, he came, he walked and he left. And that's not uh, initiation, that's just for barakah, like making wudu over wudu. Initiation you know it means you've sworn your allegiance, you're in it, you communicating that's why we have the emails because now you're communicating. When you're communicating you're, you're conversing, emailing, getting advice you have no right to ask anyone else, you have no right to go to other places and start grabbing hands of shaykhs and, and that because becomes against the adab of the tariqah. And you're being guided so there's no need for, for anyone to go anywhere other than to break their connections with the shaykh. So the, the subtlety of relationships is a very fine, so they know when you, you didn't really make that connection and it was just in the passing for barakah, no problem you can take initiation. But if you're sitting and studying then it's, it's disliked to, to eat from someone else's plate while somebody is feeding you, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum respected Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi can you please advise us of any book of where we can learn prophetic manners to teach the self and our kids with stress of dunya, I don't even know how to act anymore. Yeah, you don't need a book, you just need the YouTube channel. So go to our YouTube and, and click on the adab and manners, there's thousands, we have two thousand something videos. At least two, three hundred of them at least have to be based on the nafs, the ego, desires, manners, all of that. And then you sit with the family and you watch even the… the, the the, I don't know if Riyadh Salihin but even the sunnah books on the sunnah of eating, the sunnah of sitting, the sunnah of manners depending upon your madhab are important books. Not so much the sharia in which all the laws and confuse yourself about laws but they make little handouts about the sunnah of eating and very enlightening. 
that when you sit in Islamic cultures one dish, not twenty dishes, one dish. So then you have to have a certain manners. One is that your left hand is dirty because you clean yourself so don't ever put your left hand towards a, a dish that you're sharing with people. So then your children will learn, always Baba you put your right hand, put your left hand under your leg to keep it under control and you eat with your right hand. And then you eat only what's in front of you. You like it, you don't like it, it doesn't matter, you just take the morsels that are in front of you. So then all of these are in, in the, the sunnah books based on the adab of sitting, the sunnah of eating and uh, watching the videos inshaAllah. Because the tariqah then comes the finite on how to talk, how not to talk, how to have good character, how to stay quiet and not enter into arguments inshaAllah. And again not what we say but what we do. When the children see that we do that and we have that demeanour then they will also learn. But if they hear at the table, oh yeah this guy like that, I told him like that, who's this, he's telling me like that and they hear pride and arrogance in the talks and in the demeanour of home, how can you tell them then to be humble and do like this, do like this, do like that? So it's not what you say but what you do. But when you lead a life of you know being humble and humble and humble then they'll learn to be humble. InshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Shaykh Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Shaykh, how can we protect our head from too much waswas against our family? It's putting me against them. Waswas against your family? Again like any other waswas you have to meditate, make wudu, read your meditation book on how to push shaitan away from you because anytime shaitan is coming too close to you that's a, a spiritual problem. Why, why is he able to get so close? So it means that you should have your taweez, you should have your meditation, you should be making connection so that shaitan can't approach that close. But if shaitan is so close he's actually like on your shoulders and, and you know kissing your ears then that's something really bad because he's too close and he has too much access. Means again the remedy would be the meditation, the tafakkur, the, the rabita, the taweezes so that it's not that much. And in life we described last night some people are going to press the button to go up to the penthouse, these paradise realities and 99% are going to be pushing the button to go to hell where they want to go down, they want to celebrate, they want to reorient themselves in different directions and devastating, devastating sort of effects on humanity especially when you read about the last days that immense violence, immense wars, immense horrific sort of uh, events are coming. Then you warn people, look you see all of these potential things that are coming, well that happens on the basement, that happens on the lower floors, why would you want to go down there? So the kid's like, oh I want to go live in, in, the, in the city area, I love the downtown city area. I said, you know from what's coming all of those areas will be under extreme fire, violence, horrific, horrific uh, infrastructure breakdowns. Why would you want to go live there? So they maybe don't see past their nose but people whom their sight is very far can warn people that the inner cities will be very dangerous places, you know don't reside in those areas. If people can't get their money from the bank or they can't get food, they can't get this, what they're going to do? They're not going to just run out in, into the woods, they're going to go into the cities to steal and to, to pillage and to, to, to do whatever they want to do. So then that becomes the guidance is don't take these lower floors and think it's going to be fun and if you enter into a lower floor and begin to mark yourself and do things to yourself, Allah may not let you back up and then you'd be stuck with those people. So they have like the book of Eli and a road named John or some. they have these films about last days and horrific events of last days and it's good to watch with the family. 
except if there's any nudity cover their eyes. You say, look these are all these horrific things, that's why we don't do bad things so that Allah will let us always go back up into the heavenly realm not to earn Allah's anger and we're stuck down here with these crazy people with uh, you want to make your friends all to be bikers because it's popular. Yeah but that's when you have the luxury of going back up into the penthouse and say, I don't want to see them anymore. But if you do bad things that becomes the level you're stuck on. Can you imagine going through Armageddon sitting with them? No. So this our whole life has to be this understanding and teaching. You know teach the kids, drive to areas on our food programs, it's so important to give out food but also to give out and, and say, look when the school tells you to come and say something bad about your home, say, you know most of these people they had a home but because they did bad things and, and listened to bad advice they're homeless now. So don't listen to those advices that, that want to put you into another residence, you know they tell the kids come and you know, complain to us so that we can put you into foster care so somebody can rape and molest you so you can be here on the streets with them. So you have to take the children out and say, look these are all young people, they, they had mothers and fathers. Why are they now mentally disturbed? Why are they in this kind of condition? And this society seems to be rigged into destroying the home and destroying the home environment and we gave those in other talks. The women to go and work, the husband to go and work and the school wants to educate your family and they want to be the parent and they want to disorient you and reorient you in different directions, very dangerous time. As alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa Sayyidi, what is the role of Rahman in the world of light given it governs the world of form? And what is the wisdom behind Hussein meaning little Hassan? Hmm? That, <laughs> yeah, the, there's a part of another talk, yeah. You know, that has to do with Imam al Hasan and the Sifat al Rahman and light and the love of the Ahlul Bayt perfects our light and these are from the eyes of Prophet So when we want to be dressed by Sifat al Rahman then we have to love Imam al Hasan and the custodian of light and nur and that our life become filled with nur and light and Divinely light and the light of Prophet And Imam al Hussein is Sifat al-Rahim from Ar-Rahman al-Rahim. And these are the lights of paradise that we need for the intercession on Judgment Day to reach to our paradise reality. Then we need to have the love of Imam al Hussein and this is the oceans of uh, hayat and, and eternal fountains to drink from. So the one who represents uh, immense amount of suffering and no water to drink is the custodian of water. That we want to drink from the fountains of al-hayat and uh, what Allah has given into Sifat al-Rahim, Salaamu Qawlu Min Rabbil Raheem, the Lord of Sifat al-Rahim. That that salams and that reality has to be given to us from Imam al Hussein salam. And that's by the reverence, the love and acknowledgement. Means that when you love them you have to love them, you acknowledge them. And that's why you cry for their, their events. You know if somebody come and tell you, oh yeah I love this family and it's like, oh yeah your, your father he was butchered out in the field, yeah and it took his body parts and they put him here and they put him there and they put that there and then also his uncle was butchered and then, oh yeah one of their smaller children were butchered. Do you think if you met anyone and they came and said, well why are you crying about that? You knock him in the head say, what are you talking about why I'm crying about that? I just described my father was butchered in a field. So everyone has a sense of compassion except uh, you know these Yazidi people that come and say, what is that? So it means they're devoid of any emotion empathy, their hearts must be like stones and dirt 
But anyone with a normal heart and has this love for Prophet and can't imagine that this beautific uh, bird of paradise went through this type of difficulty and that his eternal soul is the fountain that you need to take from his hands to drink from the fountains of Sifat al-Rahim and receive salaamun qawlun min Rabbil Raheem and eternal salams that if Allah issue that salam and Imam Hussain delivers that salam alayhi salam that all of creation will be giving you salams. And that's from the heart of Surah Yaseen, the heart of Prophet and that the certainty of Hai and the yaqeen of Hai is in that reality because see the shuhada, the one whom gave himself beyond anyone in creation of his family, his loved ones, all their blood and sacrifice to show everyone else that when you're going to sacrifice for Allah that's a sacrifice. Nobody can ever top that at the end of times or at the beginning of times. And as a result Allah said, this is the master of the shuhada and the martyrs and the ones whom see inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum as salam wa Sayyidi thank you. At the end of Ramadan I feel as if my love has increased significantly. Bless you and thank you. Also can we send money to pay for books and then you ship to someone else who needs but has no money? Is there a way to do that? Yes definitely. Just call Yahya at the Rumi Rose 604-55 What's the phone number, yeah, yeah. Five five eight four four five five. Six oh four five five eight four four five five. Or info at rumirose.com and then describe what you want to do. Yahya will take your order and ship it out wherever you want to send it. You can do that even through the website. You place an order and then in the note, because it has your address, you can put somebody else's address. So there's many ways to do that and that's great, a great gift and a, a great support for people whom don't have the ability to pay for the books inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the cure to hypocrisy? Are actions helpful when hypocrisy is all over our hearts and our nafs is taking credit and blessings out of every practice and action we do? <clears throat> yeah, I think on the talk that we have on the seven levels of the nafs, the hi hypocrisy is a necessary veil that you go through because 99% of people don't acknowledge they're a hypocrite. So that's the biggest sickness. But to enter into it is to become more aware that I'm conscious now, my heart is semi-alive and that I'm in danger of hypocrisy. That I'm saying one thing and I'm doing something different or I'm battling with this love, the one day I'm making all these waswas and next day I'm telling myself I love them. So all of these then have to be acknowledged through the connection in their hearts which is a phase. Because if you don't reach that phase then it becomes just ignorance of hypocrisy which they're fully probably in the ocean of hypocrisy and they don't want to acknowledge it. So it was a necessary state in which you're consciously aware and you should be aware of this level of hypocrisy that I'm, I'm, I'm saying something and doing something different. Every time they talk and you have waswas, -was, you come against yourself that this is horrible hypocrisy or that what if this was Prophet addressing because we always lived our lives saying that visualized ourselves as if we were of the holy companions. And the, the address being given is from the lips of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result we placed our heart and our soul in that and 
in our life we had to have something that had a reverence that we respected beyond ourselves and dunya things. And if we create that and create that reverence it becomes something revered and very special for us. We didn't let anybody talk about it, we didn't let anybody make comments about it, not in home or anywhere else and that was it. This was our faith and our practices, this was the love that we have for Prophet and as a result it became more real that every time they opened their sobats, their talks and their associations. I don't know what other people experience but we experience what Allah wanted us to experience. So it means your faith makes it real, not your mind and not somebody else telling you something. But when my faith tells me that Prophet is addressing me then you have to know with all your heart and soul if you reach that level of sincerity every time that servant talks Prophet was addressing. And what they witnessed, what they understood, what every experience they went through. Now the next person can ask and say, absolutely not, I don't even know what this guy was talking about. So it's not a collective experience where we go and compare notes, what did you hear, what did you hear, no no because it's… Uh, faith is not something a collective whole has. So from left to right you don't know what type of practices and what level of faith and you can witness Divine Presence in somebody and somebody could say, this person's not worth two cents to me. So th this is a very… where well, Allah describes Allah works in miraculous ways, in mysterious ways. Based on your level of faith Allah can open everything and make everything to be real because that's what you're asking. But if the servant doesn't ask and doesn't have that understanding means nothing, nothing. And many, many stories from awliya like that, that between the big shaykh and lower shaykh that one shaykh was sitting and I think Imam Hanbali or Hanafi came and there was another shaykh of a… didn't understand his association and the shaykh was giving a guidance and he went to go wash, he drank the water of this majdub person and big scholar said, did you know that the water of wudu is dead? dead water. When this man washed that water was dead, you're a shaykh, how dare you drink his water that he washed and you drank it. And this was a big shaykh and scholar of a madhab and he says, mm, I'm, he's somebody else, I can't begin to explain to you who he is. And then he started to tell him that your water is dead, this is dead, this is not allowed, this is something you shouldn't have done. And something happened and he witnessed something and he had an experience in which he saw the lights of that individual and it's not something he understood. And he understood that what type of light was coming off of that individual, as a result that water was beyond something dead. It was it was uh, magnified with Divinely lights. So I mean, these are the things in life because that one scholar had yaqeen and knew that this majdub like spiritually disconnected individual is of a very high spiritual rank and as he's making wudu he's making a du'a on that water. So he's doing something with that reality and the one whom had faith he drank it for whatever shifa, whatever he was praying for. The one who was witnessing with external eyes said, this is a forbidden act, why are you doing something like that? So it means faith is very individual, Allah makes it real if your heart makes it real. If you say, this is real, this is a wali, this is, you know, this is the light of Prophet that will become uniquely your miracle in life. So faith is not a collective whole where we come together and say, this is, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, this is great. No, every every person will, will have their own experiences inshaAllah based on the level of their faith and yaqeen and Allah makes their entire life to become miraculous if they carry that level of faith inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi.
Walaykum as wa rahmatullah. In relation to raising children by example, if we have hidden flaws that are inwards, do the children pick that up or are they protected against our inner battles? No, they, they pick up like a, a trained pet, it's based on conditioning. They pick up what we condition them on how we eat, how we talk, how we gossip, all of these, these characteristics. They follow not what we say but what we do. When they see that you're compassionate, that you're humble, that you're caring, you're trying to help, you're trying to be of service, you're trying to pray, you're trying to, to do everything that you do, then under every normal condition they also try to, to do those characteristics inshaAllah. And that was the talk on, on the, the reality of madad for families is, is love. They love you. And as a result of that love they're shielded with your faith and your practices and how to raise them with manners so that to refine their characteristics by telling them be polite to people, talk nicely to people, you offer your, your, your services to get them a water, to be of service. Otherwise at 14 or 15 no way they're gonna come in like you know like become like hoodlums. But they enter into masjid they want to steal something, they don't, don't want to be of service to anything. So that, that's the character to be avoided and this comes through the conditioning and training of good manners inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.